Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 11 to 20 for the CompTIA Cloud Plus exam. Let's begin. A cloud architect attempts to modify a protected branch but is unable to do so. The architect receives an error indicating the action cannot be completed. Which of the following should the architect try instead? The correct answer is B. Creating a pull request. Protected branches prevent direct modifications to maintain code integrity. The correct workflow is to make changes in another branch and then create a pull request for review and approval before merging into the protected branch. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Adding a new remote. This only connects to another repository. It doesn't allow modification of a protected branch. C. Merging the branch. Merging directly into a protected branch is blocked. A pull request is required. D. Rebasing the branch. Rebasing changes commit history but still won't bypass the restriction on modifying a protected branch. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Which of the following container storage types loses data after a restart? The correct answer is C. Ephemeral. Ephemeral storage is temporary and tied to the container's lifecycle. When the container restarts or is deleted, the data in ephemeral storage is lost. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Object. Object storage is durable and persistent, designed for long-term storage of unstructured data. B. Persistent volume. Persistent volumes retain data even after container restarts, ensuring data continuity. D. Block. Block storage provides persistent, low-level storage volumes that maintain data across restarts. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Following a ransomware attack, the legal department at a company instructs the IT administrator to store the data from the affected virtual machines for a minimum of one year. Which of the following is this an example of? The correct answer is B. Retention. Retention refers to the policy or requirement to store data for a specific period of time, often due to legal, regulatory, or business needs. In this case, the legal department requires the affected VM data to be kept for at least one year. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Recoverability. This refers to the ability to restore systems and data after an incident, not the requirement to store data for a set duration. C. Encryption. This protects data confidentiality but does not address how long the data must be stored. D. Integrity. This ensures that data is accurate and unaltered, but it is not about how long the data is kept. Therefore, the correct answer is B. An engineer made a change to an application and needs to select a deployment strategy that meets the following requirements. It's simple and fast and can be performed on two identical platforms. Which of the following strategies should the engineer use? The correct answer is A. Blue-Green The blue-green deployment strategy is simple and fast, using two identical platforms. One, blue, running the current version, and the other, green, running the new version. Traffic is switched from blue to green once testing is complete, allowing for quick rollback if needed. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Canary. This refers to releasing the change gradually to a small subset of users before full rollout. This is slower and more complex than required here. C. Rolling. This updates instances and batches until all are running the new version. This is slower than blue-green and doesn't use two fully identical environments at once. D. In place. This replaces the application directly on existing instances, which can be disruptive and does not leverage two identical platforms for safety. Therefore, the correct answer is A. An organization needs to retain its data for compliance reasons but only when required. Which of the following would be the most cost-effective type of tiered storage? The correct answer is C. Archive. Archive storage is the most cost-effective option for retaining data long-term when it is only needed occasionally, such as for compliance. It is inexpensive compared to hot or warm storage, but retrieval times are slower, which is acceptable for infrequent access. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Warm. Warm storage balances cost and performance for data accessed occasionally, but it is more expensive than archive storage. B. Hot. 
Hot storage is designed for frequently accessed data with low latency, but it is the most expensive option and not cost effective for compliance retention. D. Cold. Cold storage is for infrequently accessed data, but archive storage is even cheaper and specifically intended for long term retention and compliance use cases. Therefore, the correct answer is C. An e commerce store is preparing for an annual holiday sale. Previously, this sale has increased the number of transactions between 2 and 10 times the normal level of transactions. A cloud administrator wants to implement a process to scale the web server seamlessly. The goal is to automate changes only when necessary and with minimal cost. Which of the following scaling approaches should the administrator use? The correct answer is B. Allow the load to trigger adjustments to the resources. This describes auto-scaling, where the system automatically adds or removes resources based on real-time demand. It ensures resources scale up during peak loads and scale down when traffic decreases, providing seamless performance while minimizing cost. Why do the options are incorrect? A. Scale horizontally with additional web servers to provide redundancy. While horizontal scaling improves redundancy, Doing it manually without automation may result in over-provisioning and higher costs. C. When traffic increases, adjust the resources using the cloud portal. Manual scaling requires constant monitoring and intervention, which is inefficient and prone to delays. D. Schedule the environment to scale resources before the sale begins. Scheduled scaling can help prepare for predictable traffic spikes, but is less efficient and may keep extra resources running when they aren't needed increasing cost compared to load-based auto-scaling. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Which of the following vulnerability management phases includes the process of discovering newly introduced security vulnerabilities? The correct answer is A. Scanning. The scanning phase is where tools are used to discover and detect newly introduced security vulnerabilities in systems, applications, and networks. It's the step that actively looks for potential weaknesses. Why do the options are incorrect? B. Identification. This refers to analyzing scan results to confirm which vulnerabilities are valid and relevant, not the actual discovery process. C. Reporting. This involves documenting and communicating identified vulnerabilities to stakeholders, not finding them. D. Remediation. This focuses on fixing or mitigating the vulnerabilities after they have been identified, not discovering them. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A developer sends multiple requests to a SAAS application in a short amount of time. The developer realizes that the entire server and all other users can no longer send requests to the application. Which of the following best describes the issue? The correct answer is B. API rate limiting. This describes the issue because SAAS applications often enforce API rate limits to prevent abuse or accidental overload. When too many requests are sent in a short time, the service blocks further requests, affecting the developer and potentially other users. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Service quotas. Quotas limit overall resource consumption, not request frequency. C. Full outage. A full outage would affect all users regardless of request patterns, but here, the issue was triggered by excessive requests. D. Regional service availability. This concerns whether a cloud service is available in a specific region. It doesn't explain request blocking due to too many API calls. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A cloud engineer needs to integrate a new payment processor with an existing e-commerce website. Which of the following technologies is the best fit for this integration? The correct answer is C. REST API over HTTPS Most modern payment processors provide integration through REST APIs over HTTPS, which ensures secure communication and supports standardized request response formats. This makes it the best fit for integrating a payment processor into an e-commerce website. Why do the options are incorrect? A. RPC over SSL. RPC is less common for modern web-based payment integrations and lacks the wide adoption and simplicity of REST APIs. B. Transactional SQL. SQL is used for database operations, 
not for securely integrating with external payment services. D. Secure WebSocket. WebSockets are designed for real-time, bidirectional communication, not for structured payment transactions. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Which of the following best describes a characteristic of a hot site? The correct answer is D. All servers are replicated from the main site in an online status. A hot site is a fully operational backup site with servers, applications, and data continuously replicated and kept online. It allows for near immediate failover in the event of a disaster, minimizing downtime. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Servers in the hot site are clustered with the main site. Clustering is a high availability technique but doesn't specifically define a hot site. B. Network traffic is balanced between the main site and hot site servers. That describes load balancing, not a disaster recovery hot site. C. Offline server backups are replicated hourly from the main site. This describes a warm or cold site scenario where backups are available but not continuously online. Therefore, the correct answer is D. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.